Moving on as Queen Elizabeth II's family life was far from traditional. But what was under scrutiny was her relationship with the women of Windsor. There are royal women she was influenced by. There were several that she championed. And there were other relationships which were slightly more rocky. Her relationship with Princess Diana is the one that is most talked about. It is also the one that has been the most complicated. In 1981, Queen Elizabeth approved of Diana's marriage to Charles. It wasn't a relationship. That was rocky from the start. In fact, Diana once told a royal biographer that she had the best mother-in-law in the world. Things changed when her marriage with Charles started crumbling. As things got rocky with Charles, things took a turn for the worse. It worsened with the news of Charles's affair with Camilla. Reports suggest Diana had asked for the Queen's help. She wanted her to intervene as the marriage was struggling. But what the Queen wanted for her was to be firm. Many called it a generation divide between two strong women and their very different ways of handling a situation. After Diana's accident, public anger mounted against the crown. It worsened as Queen Elizabeth II declined to lower the flag atop Buckingham Palace to half-mast. She cited protocol for the move, but that turned the public father against the monarchy. But Diana's legacy is the change she brought to the royal family, especially to the Queen's public image. Her death was a whirlwind moment. It required the monarchy to reorient its public image, to embrace a more modern image to appeal to audiences. For her daughter-in-law, Sarah Ferguson, the case was a little different. Sarah Ferguson married Queen Elizabeth's third child, Prince Andrew, in 1986. But their marriage was short-lived. This complicated her relationship with the royal family, including the Queen. What made things more complicated was another viral scandalous photo. It was when she was caught in a compromising position with financial advisor John Bryan. This made things far worse with the Queen. The incident later led to the divorce of Andrew and Sarah, one that many reports say that the Queen basically forced. Which brings us to Meghan Markle. Prince Harry chose to marry American actor Meghan Markle in 2018. It was a royal wedding that the Queen blessed. So it looked like she did approve it, even though Meghan was a divorcee. But things took a turn for the worse in 2020. Marco and Prince Harry stepped away from their royal duties. It was after Meghan experienced a so-called year of isolation and racism. She felt like the royal family failed to defend her from those vile attacks. Meghan and Harry's relationship with the rest of the royal family has been strained, especially after their tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey. There were concerns that an unnamed royal said that her and Harry's child might have a dark complexion. The Queen has always been against publicizing family matters in public, so clearly the interview did not go down too well with her, and that's according to sources. Queen Elizabeth II met the couple's daughter, Lilibet, only once. Again, only once. She was born in June 2021 and was named after the Queen's childhood nickname. Lilibet. While Prince Harry was among the family who went to Balmoral, Meghan Markle did not join him, staying behind in London. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.